Um, the first reason it's problematic is it's complicated and confusing and there's lots of different things happening at different levels and that makes it hard for people to know where to focus to move forward the issues that matter to them. So for the countries who are actually negotiating the agreement, um, developing countries have made it really clear um, from the start of negotiations under the ADP that there's um, <clears throat> a range of elements that are important in the ADP. So that's mitigation, adaptation, technology transfer, capacity building, finance, <clears throat> and intellectual property rights. So they, what developing countries really want is that all of that goes forward as a package. And that's really critical to climate justice because, um, because developed countries have obligations under the convention. In particular, they have obligations for finance, so climate finance obligations to both support developing countries in their mitigation and to pay for adaptation. So if we move forward on a mitigation-focused agreement, um, that removes, that starts, and if we come to Paris with an outcome that is focused on mitigation, that starts to weaken or remove the obligations of developed countries to provide climate finance, as well as and technology transfer and capacity building. All of this is crucial um, for mitigation to actually occur in developed and developing countries. Everybody needs to mitigate, but um, some countries have obligations to support other countries to do that. So. The problem here in the INDC, there's negotiations happening on the INDC text and some countries are trying to focus that narrowly on mitigation when in fact contributions, INDCs are about national contributions from all countries to, their, to meet their climate obligations. So for developed countries, those contributions can include finance. For developing countries, those contributions could include adaptation efforts. So we think that that negotiation stream should be broadened up. And then the fact that the elements negotiation is going on at the same time, it just, um, it allows for lots of tactics between countries as to try and get text in one here or there that then influences what happens in the other negotiating track. So it complicates things. But land use will be part of the new climate agreement. Um, it's, a large, it's, it's a big sector of emissions, it's a big sector of... It's an important consideration. There's no way we can say land should not be in a new climate agreement. It's a global agreement applicable to all countries. Um, there's a lot of good things that could be done in the land sector that would be in line with climate justice principles, in line with Indigenous people's rights, and in line with combating climate change. So the inclusion of land use doesn't mean it's a false solution. A false solution is when um, mitigation in the land sector is used to undermine mitigation from industrial energy processes. So either by offsets, trading on a carbon market. So if, if the, the way red has been set up, um, if your mitigation from forests was counted and then made as carbon credits and then another country could buy it and use that to meet its obligation, that's a false solution because in fact those two things aren't comparable, so in reality we didn't get as much mitigation as we could have and we had a loophole to actually stopping climate change. Um, so the other false solution that that, that that can happen without a carbon market, that could just happen between countries, or those credits could be traded on a carbon market and carbon market trading can also include just energy credits, it doesn't have to be forests and energy. So carbon trading would also be a false solution in the new climate agreement because again it, it lets countries get out of actually reducing emissions by buying um, emission reductions from other countries. So these are things that we don't want to see in the new agreement but I also think that to say that the new agreement is a false solution now when there's countries who are fighting for these things to not happen undermines their fight. So I think that we need to we need to work to keep false solutions out of the agreement but we shouldn't prejudge that the, the agreement already is a false solution. In my mind, it means that the system we currently have, which is the, the, sort of the dominant world model, which is the Western capitalist model, model, is what's led us to the climate change problem. Economic growth is what's causing climate change. So we need system change. We need, uh, we're, and we're not, economic growth is not compatible with stopping climate change. It's too, uh, we have so little, we have used up almost all of our atmosphere, atmospheric space. We have so little space left to, for, for any um, greenhouse gas emissions, that we need a system that's not based on growth, a zero growth or a degrowth model, and that's what system change is to me.
Okay, thank you. Thank you so much.